Hi, Joe O'Connell, Sandpiper Pump. We're gonna show you how to put a wet end kit into an S1F non-metallic today. Sitting on the bench, I have an S1F non-metallic center ported, an S1F non-metallic inline ported. We're gonna show you how to put the kit into the S1F center ported. Sitting out front here, I have examples of Sandpiper Genuine Parts, wet end kit, air end kit. The rebuild you're going to see is accurate in man, method, and machine, but for video purposes, some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during the presentation, please pause this video until you've completed any phase of the process. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that has been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of parts and components during the rebuild. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Sandpiper Genuine Replacement Parts, Wet End and Air End Kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Sandpiper recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at www.sandpiperpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rupp video on safety at sandpiperpump.com. During our wet side rebuild today, from our wet end kit, we're going to install diaphragms, check balls, and ceiling rings. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, o-ring pick, small slotted screwdriver, snap ring pliers, sockets and or wrenches, one half inch, 9 16 inch, 3 quarters inch, 1 and 3 8 inch 6 point socket, 3 16 inch socket head Allen wrench, 5 16 inch socket head Allen wrench. Let's get started. For ease of assembly and disassembly, we're going to use a 3 8 inch impact gun. We're going to go ahead and start by taking off the manifold. Got a couple of bolts here, so. Once you've removed all the bolts from the discharge manifold, set that aside. And take the ceiling rings from the check ball retainers out and discard those. Take the check ball retainers out and discard the check ball. Do that on both sides. After some use, the retainer may stick inside the chamber. May need a pair of pliers to remove the, the check ball retainer assembly. Reach in and pull the inner seals out and discard those. Flip the pump over and then remove the suction manifold. Once you have all the bolts loosened, set the suction manifold aside. Remove the seals, the check ball retainers, and the inner seals. You can discard the seals and the check balls. Now we're going to go ahead and take one of the outer chambers off. Get the chamber off, set the chamber aside. Now we'll remove the diaphragm assembly. You're going to want to use a six point socket here. 
Uh, outer plate is plastic. Anything but a six point socket may damage that plate. As you remove the diaphragm assembly, you may get the diaphragm rod out with the assembly. This is okay. Set that assembly aside and take off the opposite diaphragm chamber. Set it aside and remove the diaphragm assembly. In this case, the rod came out with the diaphragm assembly. Now we're going to remove the diaphragm assembly from the diaphragm rod. Today we are using a vise with soft jaws. Soft jaws are utilized to ensure that the shaft is not scarred, scratched, or damaged while it's clamped in the vise. Go ahead and install the diaphragm rod into the vise and we'll remove the assembly from the rod. Make sure you use a six point socket. Keep from damaging that outer plate. Get that off, set your bumper aside. Remove the rod. You want to inspect the rod for scratches, gouges, replace if needed. Take your soft jaws off and we want to go ahead and grab the inner plate on one of the diaphragm assemblies. Make sure you grab at the lower part of the inner plate and not on the radius. And using our six point socket, we want to separate the inner plate from the outer plate. You can discard the diaphragm. We want to do that for both assemblies. Again, making sure that you grab on the lower part of the inner plate. Go ahead and open up your wet end components and set them out. Inspect the inner and outer diaphragm plates. Ensure the plates have no sharp edges or scarring on the radius. Plates can be cleaned up with emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Make sure the radius is maintained during cleanup. Replace if necessary. Take one of the inner diaphragm plates and we're going to put it into the vise. You want the flat face of the inner diaphragm plate to be up. Take our diaphragm, natural bulge of the diaphragm will face out, so you'll place it so it's facing up. And then the outer plate. Thread the outer plate through the diaphragm into the inner plate and torque the assembly together. We want to repeat this process for the next assembly. Again, grabbing the diaphragm plate low on the plate and not on the radius. Flat face goes up. Natural bulge of the diaphragm will go out. And then thread the outer diaphragm plate onto the assembly. Torque the whole assembly together to the recommended torque specifications called out in the service and operating manual. We want to then clamp our diaphragm rod back into the vise. And we're going to go ahead and thread one assembly onto the rod. Make sure you put your bumper on and thread the assembly onto the rod. And you want to uh, torque this assembly to the rod according to the torque specifications found in the service and operating manual. And then install the assembly with the rod into the intermediate. You have to make sure you get proper hole alignment. It is unbalanced. There's four holes on each side of the diaphragm. You need to make sure you line those four holes up on each side of the diaphragm with the four holes in the intermediate. You have a center point on the intermediate and arrows on the diaphragm. Install the rod with the assembly on and line the bolt holes up to the proper bolt hole alignment.
Take one of our outer chambers. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring scratches or material buildup can be cleaned up by using memory paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. One thing about the chamber, it does have a bead on it. You need to make sure that bead is maintained. Replace the chamber if necessary. There is no top or bottom to the chamber. Orientation can be either way. As long as the orientation is lined up with the nameplate and the bolt holes. Put your bolts in, tighten them down in a crossing pattern. Now we're going to install the opposite diaphragm. Make sure you put the bumper onto the diaphragm rod. Thread the assembly on the rod and tighten to manufacturer's recommended torque. If the hole alignment is not achieved at torque, Always continue to tighten to achieve hole alignment, never loosen. With the S1F, you may not be able to achieve hole alignment. In this case, remove the diaphragm assembly and loosen the inner and outer plate. Rotate the diaphragm and retighten the assembly. I want to go ahead and install the outer chamber. Inspect the faces, the machine surfaces, the radiuses. The outer chamber has no suction or discharge side. Just need to make sure that you align it with the proper bolt hole alignment in the diaphragm and inner chamber. Get the bolts in and then torque in a crossing pattern to the specifications called out in the service manual. Now we're going to take our suction and discharge manifold assemblies. We're going to take the elbows off the manifolds and replace the seals. Separate the elbow from the manifold and remove the seal. I'm going to inspect that seal face, inspect all the faces. Take our new seal, place it in the receiver groove, and reassemble the elbow to the manifold, ensuring proper alignment with the opposite elbow. Install the bolts and torque and a crossing pattern to the manufacturer's recommended torque specification. You want to repeat the process on the opposite side. I'm going to do the same thing for the suction. Take the four bolts off the elbow. Remove the seal, install the new seal, and retighten the bolts in a crossing pattern to the manufacturer's torque specifications. I want to make sure we put the unit upside down first. The nameplate on the intermediate would be up, so. Make sure you flip the unit over so you cannot see the nameplate. Install the two seals. These seals have two sides, a V-shaped side and a flat side. The V-shaped side will always face the check valve retainer assembly. Take our check ball retainer, inspect that. We have the retainer, 
the sleeve in the seat, install your check ball. With the pump upside down, the retainer side goes in first, so you'll be able to see the seat side. Do this on both sides. Install your new seals. The V groove of the seal goes up against the check ball retainer assembly. Place your manifold assembly on. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Tighten bolts evenly in a crossing pattern and torque to the recommendations called out in the service and operating manual. There will be a gap left between the elbow flange and the chamber flange. This is okay. The flange seals against the seal. Do not try to compress the gap out of the flange faces. Flip the unit over. Install your inner seals. And again, these seals have two sides. The V-shaped side will always face the check valve retainer assembly. And in this position, you're going to take your check ball retainer assembly. With the pump upright, you'll need to take the check ball retainer assembly and install the seat side first. Install your seals and replace your manifold assembly. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Tighten the manifold assembly down to recommended torque. There will be a gap between the elbow flange and the chamber flange. This gap is okay. That completes our wet side rebuild of our S1F non-metallic. If you're doing a complete rebuild, also see our air side rebuild. Or for additional information, find us on the web, sandpiperpump.com, or contact after sales support at service.warnerup at idexcorp.com. Thanks.